G'day, I'm Nick Laidlaw, and today we're going to be exploring the concepts uh, of mobility versus strength. Uh, this is a really interesting one for me, um, been practicing as, as a movement practitioner, as a mover, mover my whole life, um, surfing, rock climbing, you name it, I've had a go and I love it all. But as a movement practitioner and a teacher, the last 15 years I've been in the space, starting with um, as a yoga teacher, finding Paul Check's work, which is very holistic and treating the body as a system of different systems. Gone into exploring different martial artists, work, dance, drama. So I've kind of had like a really good exposure to all and then more recently training specifically uh, high-performing athletes and servers. So it's, it's a real big interest of me to find some clarity in, in a world and an industry that has such contentious um, narrow views i find that people you're either like a yogi and you're like it's all about mobility lengthening and opening or you're a crossfitter and it's all about strength stabilizing um and integrity and so i don't think there's a wrong answer or even a wrong way of thinking at all but what i'm really interested in is finding a middle road which isn't so divisive just one thing or just the other because when it comes to strength and mobility we need to have both and then when it comes to you as an individual, you need to find your happy ground and your happy medium between the two. So for example, I get a lot of people who come in, built like a brick shit house, they wanna just continually work on what they're good at, which is strength. And um, that's totally fine and I understand that because we're often drawn to the things that we're good at. But what I try to remind these types of clients is that if we wanna really build a nice, house we need to have it on a good foundation so we need to open up all of those tight parts of your body that are inhibiting functional strength um, so to try and change our mindset away from just choosing prescriptions of exercises prescription of hacks that we find online it's like can i help you guys understand concepts a little bit better so then you can work on making the best program for you so, and then on the other scheme of things, I'll have like a lot of yogis, a lot of people that are super flexible, like a body type like mine, who come in and they're just like, I'm not interested in the strength, it builds too much heat, fire in my body, whatever that is. Um, I wanna work on opening, and it's like, you've already got so, such an open structure, why don't we hone, getting some, hone in on getting some stability to support, and some integrity to support this beautiful open structure that you have. So, um, yeah, so mobility, if I can just first define you know, give you my definition of these two things that might help the context even more. So mobility is like the ability to take ourselves through a certain range or a required range of motion, pain-free uh, and smoothly, you know? So if you're, depending on what you do, if you're a builder, it's about being able to get to the ground, pick things up off the ground that might be heavy, awkward, and lifting things up um, pain-free and without hurting your joints. Uh, and then, so that would be like a mobility definition not the not the definition but a definition and then we talk about stability it's like how can we hold our body's integrity through a given set task so you know that's about picking up uh, an object an inanimate ob object off the ground without your back blowing out like that would be a, an example of having not enough integrity in the body so it's all about finding our balance and I, the main point i want to get across today is that there's not one way it's not about because you see online there's people that are just chasing huge huge amounts of mobility and they're just like in the end like an overcooked bit of spaghetti they're just going to break there's no integrity there uh, and then when we just build 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 stability stability or strength 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 it's like we might look aesthetically really strong but you can't if you can't touch your toes you, you might run into trouble when it's time to have kids or whatever that is you know so it's about finding the balance of both um, and today i also want to exemplify just a few exercises that need like the perfect balance of both so if we can have a few takeaways from today, first would be like, let's find your neutral. What's your natural inclination and what's your natural disposition? Are you, do you feel that your uh, muscles are naturally shorter, tighter, um, and you're stronger? Is that your natural disposition? Or are you more open and expansive um, and loose? So once we find your disposition, your natural disposition, then we can work on chipping away and what doesn't come as naturally to us. And that's what I'd love you guys to walk away from watching this, work into what you're less 
what you left, what you have a less aptitude for, so naturally. So when the yogis come in, I get them straight on the squat rack. When the crossfitters come in, I get them straight on the de decompression uh, with things like hanging, with things like rolling the spine, with things like captivating openness and softness in the body. The yin yang, it's, it's, it's a very broad term, but it's like we can't have one without the other. We actually, they're actually both codependent on each other. So that's my overall spiel on what I reckon Finding that balance between um, strength and mobility is, I don't have an answer because there's not one way that fits everyone and there's not one, not only one answer. It's a, it's, I want to play in the field of more questions and curiosity. Uh, and now what I'm going to show you is just two exercises which will just prove my thoughts on the need to have ample amounts of both. So the first one's going to be the skin the cat, so that's an upper body straight arm strength pulling exercise where we need a lot of mobility openness in the shoulder um, to and a lot of strength in the lower abdominals to execute the whole movement pain-free and actually to help our structure continue to get more integrity. And then the next one is a pistol squat. So that's a single leg balancing exercise uh, where we need to allow our hips, our abdominals, our knees and ankles to be as mobile enough to get our butt to the ground, but also strong and integral enough to uh, lift us back up again, injury-free and pain-free. So I'm often talking about the structure of bamboo. It's a beautiful structure to aspire to. It bends, but it doesn't break. It's super mobile, but it's very integral. Um, so yeah, I'll leave you with that. And then we'll explore a few exercises. So thanks for tuning in, guys. So you see here, if I'm practicing a deep squat or a pistol squat is the kind of most extreme example that I can share uh, where we need both. If you look at me doing a pistol squat, you see that there's, it's reliant and dependent on a lot of the of openness in my ankle, in my knee, and in my hip. But as well as needing to be open through these junctions, I'm also needing to be stable through like my quads, through my tibs, through my hips as well. Because if I was just open, I might be able to get down there, but then I'd be stuck. Um, but if I was just strong, strong as brick shit house by doing like lots of machine work on my legs and quads in kind of exercises that do most of the work for you, like I'd get away from any machines, the most of the machines that you can because they do most of the work for you. They don't include the deep abdominal musculature to need to fire to do these well. So I'd be getting away from machines. But if you are looking strong because you're using lots of machines to lift the weight with you, it's not going to kind of equate or translate to real life. And that's why we train, it's like, I don't know, if you train to be a body for, to be a bodybuilder for aesthetics, that's great. And if that's like your purpose, then like all the power to you. My take on things is to like practice in here in a controlled environment so we can really thrive out there for me, for me, it's like out of the ocean, climbing rocks. For you, it might be something completely different, but it's like, how can we use this practice ground to make ourselves perform better in real life? So yeah, that's my take on the pistol squat. Needing, them, needing both really good mobility and really good strength. And then I'll show you another upper body that uh, exercise that requires both as well. Okay, cool. So then if we're to look at our strength, you know, whether it's pound for pound strength or lifting our body weight, uh, which I think is a really great foundation to get stability and strength with your own body weight is essential before you start lifting anyway. So that's a, a slow and delayed gratifying uh, response to training that I would really encourage one to look into. Um, body weight has a Swiss ball too. And then you get some, re like some rings and things like that, and then you add free weight. So that would be the kind of trajectory that I would be using, or that's what I do use, I've used with thousands of clients, um, just to help you really not master, but understand your body's own weight to strength ratio and mobility ratio as well. So speaking on strength and mobility, the skin and cap, which is a straight arm exercise, um, really requires a lot of strength and stability through the shoulder girdle, through the abdominal musculature, and then going into your back. And it requires a lot of mobility through the front side of the shoulder girdle, uh, through the hips as well. So here it goes. I want to pull without bending my elbows. I want to lift myself up, carry myself all the way over in a really controlled way. So there's the strength and then there's the mobility to be able to hang here without any pain and to do this for a long time, which I have. Uh, and then pulling yourself back over, again, without any bend in the elbow and while maintaining really good form through the whole body. So I'll just do one more in real time. So, 
if I was just strong, I'd be able to do heaps of chin-ups and not much else. If I was super mobile, <laughs> I might be able to, to twist my arms and contort my spine in lots of different ways, but it wouldn't be useful for much. So it's like, how can we practice again? How can we practice to then be able to apply in the real world? This is, this is the training room. It's not the room to necessarily look the best, be the, be the best in the, in the room. It's be our best self and then how can it apply to our life? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. You.